This exercise is an exploration of jobs from the future. So we've started off by deconstructing what it looks like if uh, you know the scenario from Avengers Endgame became real. So what happens when Thanos has the snap? 50% of the world's population disappears, right? Very, very, very stressful scenario. Um, and we think it's a speculative scenario. We think it's never going to happen. And then we look at the data on climate change and we realize that you know when you look at a four degree temperature rise, we're looking at about two to four degrees right now. At four degrees, the uh, carrying capacity of the planet could potentially go down to less than one billion. So what happens to the other eight billion people? So we're using that idea, that speculative idea of 50% of the world's population suddenly disappearing to deconstruct what the world looks like. And then from that, we're going to design new jobs from the future. And we're doing that because we want to challenge ourselves to think outside of the scenarios we're used to and extrapolations from the present. So kind of stepping outside of the box a bit. The challenge in this sort of forum is to push yourselves outside of your comfort zone and your you know, general assumptions and biases that you have about what the future of work might look like and what jobs of the future might be. So when we think about the future of work, we always think about it in the context of AI and automation. We don't think about it as much in the context of climate change, even though issues like climate migration, erratic weather will also affect the future of work. And so by thinking about it in a context that's more speculative, we can go outside the usual norm that we think about and force ourselves to think about issues that are not so typical um, within the context that we're, we're usually discussing it. Futures literacy is being able to communicate with people about complex issues in a language that they understand. And so if we help people uh, speak the language of futures, but also speak it in a way that you know means something valuable to them that translates well for them, then hopefully we can do a better job of designing the future together. We have a very hard time understanding the relationship that we have with the future. So in the context of the future of work, futures literacy means understanding what is available to me and how I can give back to the world, especially as the world changes in ways that we can't predict. So this idea of what it means to contribute to the world, what it means to have purpose, becomes very, very important. And if people can't engage with the future in a way that's meaningful, then it's hard for them to understand their place in it as well. My particular approach to spreading futures literacy in the world has to do with how we communicate to people and how we engage them. So if, uh, if it means speaking a new language that um, falls somewhere in between our language of foresight and the language that you know society generally tends to speak, it's finding ways that those languages translate between each other. So uh, one of the things that we do here is because we're using a speculative scenario that everyone is kind familiar with this idea of Avengers Endgame. It's a very popular movie. How can we use that sort of scenario that so many people are familiar with and bring that into foresight, but also add an element of foresight and futures literacy back into that as well. Um, I think the future of this sort of forum is collaborative. It's highly collaborative and it's uh, focused on systems and not silos. So rather than focusing on one issue at a time where we're just talking about, let's say, the future of work or, you know, the future of climate change, we're taking a complexity sort of approach to it where we're talking about the future of all things at once in a way that is more meaningful because the future won't be one thing and it won't happen in isolation. It's happening to us all at once. So we have to really look at it for the complexity that's there.